I think you're on. Oh, are we live? <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. This is Danny. And Wanda. From Deep South Homestead. We are back on our deck today. We are shelling English peas. We actually had a bumper pick this morning. We picked uh, two five gallon bucket pulls. Yeah. And we figure if we got to sit here on the deck and shell peas, that maybe we just might order to do it live stream while we're here. We got nothing else to do. And figured, you know, a few of you pop in and chat because we had a few questions we wanted to address. And uh, there's Brittany. And Brittany, guess what? We were going to answer your questions. That's yeah. funny that she showed up first. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Uh, uh, and we got Simple Times, yeah. Barney, Mama T, Mud Pie Girl, Buckeye Girl. Guys, okay. we got all these English peas here we're putting on the table. These are the these are the ones we're saving for seeds. So as we go through this, some of them is a little bit overripe for us. And if you're overripe, we just throw you up on the table and you get to dry for seeds. If you wonder why we're what we're doing every so often, that's it. Ah, so backwards raised and Christy Betts. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and so we're just sitting here shelling, killing time. And I, we may not see every comment if we don't, you know, every question. Um, it is a lovely day here, Brenda. Um, put them in all caps if you ask them a question. And um, if we don't get to it, repeat it at like every five minutes or so. And maybe we'll see it at some point. Uh, so we're hoping. Yeah, they hear the birds singing. You're going to hear the... You're going to uh, hear the birds. You're going to hear the turkeys. The you're going to hear the wind blowing in the trees. Yeah. Can y'all hear us okay? Um, we don't have two mics. We only have one, and we didn't hook it up this time. We're trying to perfect the mic system, and it's kind of difficult for us when we don't have time to play around with stuff. Um, yeah. So... Our questions today came from Brittany, and she joined us, so she gets to hear them live. Um, yep. She wanted to know about the difficulties of homesteading. Well, Homesteading is not for the lighthearted or the, the weary, I'll say that. It's not for lazy people. Nope. And if you're lazy, you don't like to get up early, uh, you don't like to stay outside, uh, you don't like hard work, because it is hard work. It's hard work. Like this morning, for instance, I was up at 4.30 this morning. I fixed breakfast for me and Wanda. We ate breakfast and was out the door by 5.30, 6. Around 6, maybe. Around 6, right there. Just as daylight enough to see how we went. and um, Fed animals. Well, that was actually one of her other questions. So. Yeah, well, we may get them out of... <laughs> But no, I mean, but that's that's what we're talking about. You have to be willing to get up at that time of the morning to actually get things going. Yeah, because here, and that may be different somewhere else, but here, we picked English peas, and what, at quarter till nine? We, we were, were still picking. Yeah. And we got two five-gallon buckets, so that's a lot of English peas. And the sun was already hitting the field at a quarter till nine. And if we had not started till eight or nine o'clock, we would have really been we would out, we'd be burning suffering. up. We'd be yeah. suffering. So the heat plays a factor that we get up early. And besides, we get a lot done before lunch. Actually, um, what is something? What is it? What is something? Mississippi purple holes. The Mississippi purple holes are peas. They're a field pea. Yeah, these are English peas. We're right now we're planning we're doing English peas, which are these. But they were catching up on videos and they saw the Mississippi purple holes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't that know if I can turn this up. Pea. I see, you know, it's English peas. Yeah. And see we use these big old things. And th these are kind of a mine is uh stainless and his is plastic, but yeah. The way they're made, they're big enough that you can rest your hands on the bowl. And I don't know if you can see it, but I rest my hands on the bowl and shell. And so you're not up over it like this and all humped up. It makes a difference in what you have to it shell. It does, yeah. It makes a difference, yeah. Because 
my hands fit really well on this right at the point you need and it's wide enough that where I have long arms that I'm not shelling over it or back here all under me so it makes a difference but back to what's something you wish you had done as soon as you started homesteading certain food animals equipment or whatever uh, Danny wishes he had gotten this place up and running better because he's been actually had several homesteads and this yeah, is I've had several homesteads in my life and each one of them's been different and each one of them he's always um, I've advanced on every one of them yeah what I wished I'd have done earlier in life is bought a tractor with a front end loader and you know he waited till now <laughs> I waited till now I should have bought one earlier that that's the one thing. I wished I had done earlier was bought a tractor with a front end loader. Yeah, because if you have very much land, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, I've been um, able to accomplish a tremendous amount with that front end loader. And if it was me, I would rearrange my house different. Um, since I married Danny five years ago, he already had this house because he had built it in 2004. And... Um, it's hard for us to rearrange the house to fit what we want, but we're gradually getting there. We're, we're rearranging things little by little, yeah. but mine would be to redo the kitchen. Uh, of course, we redid the kitchen. Don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm talking about. I would redesign. We would have more of a, probably an outdoor kitchen, but not really outdoor because it gets hot here, but it would be in a different setup so that we had all our canning in one spot because I have to bring everything out and have all everything set up and can like yesterday I canned four canners of carrots so that was all day we dug the carrots cleaned the carrots cut the carrots up and I canned four times yesterday then when we get through I have to clean everything up and move it so that we can have food you know so we can cook and whatever and then I had to bring it out again the next day because we've been canning every day for a while. Yeah. Uh, what's the question? What's the status on what? Sugar cane. Is it too late to grow it in the Delta? They're in Tunica, Mississippi. Well, first of all, you're not going to find any to plant this time of the year. Uh, to plant sugar cane, you get it in the fall and you plant it in the fall. Yeah, and it comes back out and in the spring. It comes back out in the spring. All right. Her asparagus is dying and going to seed. Planted crowns in February of 2016. What did I do wrong? If it's going to uh, if it's going to seed, that simply means that well, if you plant in 2016, 17, 18, uh, this is only your second year to have it, so there's nothing wrong. Just let it go that way because all your growth is going back into your root system. You could have harvested some of the spears off of it if you had worn them. You just couldn't harvest all of them off because they need to go to seed and they need to put the, the growth back into the root system on it. So next year you should be able to get a, all you want off of it. Yeah. Ours did really well last year. We had quite a bit off of it. And this year we've been harvesting some since February maybe. Yeah. But it's slim, like one or two, four or five. Yeah, nothing like what it should have been. And we're keeping it going, but we let some of it go to seed. It's all, there's quite a bit of it going to seed right now. Like spears here and there so that we know we have seed and we have, that they grow for next year. But we have three beds, so we're hoping to have a better harvest eventually. But it takes three years takes three years to be able to if harvest it. If you put it. a crown, yeah. if you plant it by seed, we planted some from seed two years ago, and we won't be eating on it for another couple of years. Yeah. And um, rich soil. They need rich soil. Okay, so we're going to get back to what is the best time to collect seeds of kale? When it flowers up when and they dry. When it flowers up and they dry, yeah. But you do need to cut it. Once the seeds start drying, cut it down and put it in a paper sack. Yeah. And that way you catch them because if you leave it in the garden, you might not get them. Yeah, the little holes will pop open in the garden and all the seeds will fall out on the ground. Yeah. Okay, so back to the difficulties. Um, actually, homesteading is a very rewarding, it's rewarding 
way of life. We enjoy it, yeah. but not everybody will. If you have small kids, you're going to have lots of difficulties because you can't, you feel overwhelmed. You can't get everything done. Um, just taking care of the kids sometimes is a chore. And then you throw animals and planning and everything all yeah. on top of it. It does get difficult. But for Danny and I, we don't have children. Uh, we have people in and out sometimes, but they help out or whatever. So we're not as tied down, I guess, with kids. But what would be very difficult? That's what I was sitting here thinking about. I mean, our homestead is laid out so well. So we and it takes a while to get it laid out right. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. Uh, so... You have to be patient, and you have to try things, and if it doesn't work, you change it. We're, um, we're constantly changing things. I mean, yeah. that's, change is not a bad thing. Don't you know. think you're going to set your homestead up, and it's going to always be just perfect, and you've got everything in place, because just like our chickens, we set this chicken pen up, and we've been changing it. even got rabbits in one pen that's supposed to have chickens that we've got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're constantly rearranging the chickens, rearranging how we do. Uh, we do not free range them all the time because we've got an edible landscape. And a lot of yeah. people say, oh, you need to free range. Well, I'd rather not have them eat my food. I want to eat my food. So we feed the chickens and we keep them in a contained area. Yeah. But we are constantly rearranging and selling, buying new, whatever with the chickens. But if I had it to do over, I would love a huge area where we could fence in more for the chickens Yeah. and be able to have it like our field out there. I would love to have the whole field and a nice chicken coop in the middle of it. But we have animals, so they decide they like our chickens a little better sometimes. Yeah, well, wild animals, that's one thing. We're always trying to eradicate wild animals. I guess that would be another difficulty on the homestead is just trying to... Uh eradicate all eradicate all the wild animals that keep coming up here the coons and the possums and the coyotes and the foxes and stuff like that and snakes and things like that you're constantly having to eradicate those animals on a daily basis we hardly ever have a day go goes by that we don't have some kind of trap set to catch something yeah, and you get a lot of flack for that, but you do. But, but if you, you're going to eat, you have to make the decision: uh, is it worth it to let your chickens free range and eat your food, and then you don't have any? Is it worth it to let the wild animals come in and eat it just because they're cute and they look nice, and you like watching a deer run around? Yeah. Sometimes that's not possible. Um, right. You I have mean, to decide if you want to eat or if they're going to eat. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, it's, that's that's the bottom line. You know, wildlife is cute and it looks nice, but there comes a point where you know you got to draw a line. And to me, I guess that's probably one of the more difficult things about homesteading is keeping all the wildlife eradicated around your property. And most people have never had to raise their own food. They still have depend on a grocery store. Yeah. When you get to the point you're raising your own food and you're dependent on yourself for that food, the wild animals aren't cute anymore. Your your outlook changes. Yeah. Yeah. Because Danny, like like us, we don't go to the grocery store and buy our food. Not a lot. We buy some things, but ninety percent of our I'd say almost everything. Almost a hundred percent of our veggies. And probably, we're probably up to, what, 40% maybe meat right now? Yeah, probably up to 40% of our meat. And we hope within a year or so to have the meat under control. Yeah. But our biggest expense is all the extras that we can't make or grow. Yeah, the, the salt, like for canning, uh, preserving, sugar. sugar. Now, we could, we could make some sugar out of our sugar cane, but we would be have to be pretty sparingly with it because you know it yeah it takes a lot of sugar cane to make a lot of sugar like the cannon jar the lids the, the jars, lids for cannon jars all this stuff we have to keep buying more this um, is all expenses that has to be paid for yeah you can't you can have a thousand jars out there sitting there with nothing in them but if you don't have any lids and flats for them they're totally useless to you so you have to keep investing in that and we do, we buy, I mean, 
just about every time we go to town, we buy some and keep sticking up. We do. I mean, every so, time we go to the store, we get at least five to, I don't know, five to ten boxes of yeah. flats. And here lately, I've been using that many. Yeah, uh, for a week. Just about in a week. And so I'm not, I'm not taking out of my stash, but I'm not building up anything either because I'm breaking even, if you'd say. Yeah. Um. So we're kind of doing that, but that's some of the difficulties of homestead. And I guess um, now, how you, many? Like you said, if you have kids, it's probably balancing it with uh, with school and stuff like that. You know. It's, yeah, I guess one thing would be cooking too. I find it very difficult to work all all the time and try to help him with things outside, because to start with, Danny and I did everything together. So if we were inside Cannon. We were both canning. If we were outside working in the garden, we were both outside. Yeah. The last year, we've had to start separating and him go one way and me go the other because we can't keep up. We, we've upped the... We've upped everything. Everything as far as animals. We've upped the vegetables. Vegetable production. Because we finally realized how much we have to have yeah. uh, to actually survive per year for and just so, two of us yeah and the cooking we cook from scratch everything is basically cooked from scratch and i try to spend one day ever two or three days cooking up enough that i don't have to cook every meal so i might spend like three hours and i'll have everything laid out and planned yeah and cook four, five, six things all at once. And then I don't have to cook any of that for two or three days, maybe four days, sometimes five days, whatever. Now, when we're canning, we do only buy the silver lids. Yes. We don't buy the gold lids. The gold lids we've learned. Now, the gold lids will work okay on things like jellies and jams that are just water bath. But if you're going to run something through a pressure cooker, we found out that the gold uh, lids will not hold up over a period of time. They will actually start rusting on you. Yeah, you'll like the... We only, we only use the silver ones. Yeah, somebody asked that. Yes, the silver. Uh, Mr. Dexter... Ha! <laughs> Y'all, Mr. Dexter is so funny. We are having the time of our lives between the goats and Mr. Dexter. Believe me. Uh, I have video where... They're not. They're scared of each other. Yeah, one's scared and the other's proud of it. And if the if Mr. Dexter goes toward the goats, they run. If the goats go toward Mr. Dexter, he runs. And he's figured out the cows across the road. And so every day for the last three or four days, Mr. Dexter goes all the way to the fence at the front of our property, and stands there and yells. And the other cows across the road come over. And they yell back and forth for, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, about like 20 minutes. Before yeah. they decide, okay, it's not worth it. So, and he's actually letting Danny pet him. He's, he lets me pet him. But the thing about it is, is Mr. Dexter is so short. <laughs> I the, lost the, him. The grass in our fields is about four foot deep. And when you look out there, you can't find him. And I honestly, two days ago, went out there to move the girls. And I thought he'd gotten out. I searched the barn. I looked all in the field, and he was nowhere to be seen. And I was headed back to the barn, hollering at him, and turned back around to see where the girls were, and he was standing in the field. He had laid down in the grass so I couldn't see him. Yeah. And when he stands up, you can barely see the, his back and his head, and it is so funny. It's funny, because the grass is as deep as he is. So, so I didn't lose the cow, but I was fixing to start a... Okay, I lost my cow video. Yeah. No, we have any questions up on there we can catch before they go out of the chat. I see one. What? Dixie Prepper says they're from Wiggins. Oh, awesome. What do you use something about your corn for? Somebody wants to know about What them. do you use on your corn for army worms? We don't have army worms on our corn here, so we don't have to worry about that. Somebody wants to know about this spout behind us. This what? Oh, the downspout? Uh, that's off of the studio room that I added on to the back of the house here. I have a gutter on it to keep the water from pouring onto the deck here by the studio room. 
It's for future water catchment system is what it's for. We just haven't got that far. How can you tell what color the lid will be before you purchase the canning lids? Does it's, it say on it? It's on the it's on the box. I think it says it on the box. Or if you look at just it, just don't buy anything that says Mason on it. Just uh, stick with ball. Stick with your ball. You'll see lids that talk about they're good up to uh, 18, eighteen months, months. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They'll tell you that they're a silver color. Yeah, somewhere on it, it should tell you it's silver. How come Heather isn't helping? <laughs> She's actually finishing a video for you, for Dad right now. She'll be out in a few minutes. <laughs> I knew Heidi was going to get into that. Huh. Uh, she's going to, I've got plenty, believe me. We're not even started on shelling these pigs. No, we ain't even begin. Uh, Danny's bucket only has this much out of it. And it's a five-gallon bucket, and mine has this much because I started earlier. So we've got quite a few. Heather's going to have fun helping Shell P shortly. Why no dog? Well, we had a dog. And um, it was Danny's dog. It was my dog. And he was 14 years old. Almost 14. Almost 14 years old. Yeah. And he was a West, West Highland White Terrier. Yeah. Cute little thing. But uh, he... Had he got been, sick, and I had to put him down. Yeah, because he was old. Because he was just old. And we decided not to have another dog. We yeah. thought about it, but we don't want barking dogs. I can't, and, I can't handle a barking dog, so I just decided. And we would have to train it. And I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to retrain it all over again. And I just Rue was very well behaved most of yeah, the time. Yeah, my dog, <laughs> my dog was very well trained most of the time. Most of the time, he was very well behaved and trained. He was a he was a good dog, and Danny had spent a lot of time training that dog. So we really we've got the goats and the chickens and the pigs and the cow and the rabbits and turkeys, and we really don't have time to add a dog right now. Yeah, and we train every animal we have. Yeah. So you know, I mean, to add a dog in the mix, and two, you cannot eat a dog, and we really don't want an animal on the property that we cannot eat. Yeah, that we might have to feed just because. Yeah. Now that we've got the place fenced in, we might could do an outside dog eventually. But that's down the road. Yeah. Why well, haven't I seen Heather's sister lately? Well, right now, they, they still have the property in Florida. So they are half in Florida and half in that Mississippi. And so when they get the house sold, everybody will be in Mississippi. So they're transitioning right now. They're in a transition period between homesteads. Yes. Brian's getting everything ready for them here. And as soon as the house sells, they will all be here. You'll see them some off and on. They'll be back and forth. But until they get it all ready, they will be back and forth. Um, it's just like anything else. you got to... There's just that transition that takes place, you know. Yeah. Nothing happens overnight. Okay, so another thing Brittany wanted to know was how many hours a day do we spend? Well, oh, we get up early, and I don't know if you're wanting to count breakfast and everything else, but Danny gets up at 4 or 4.30 lots of times. He spends time on the computer answering questions, things like that. He cooks breakfast, and I get up, what, 6.00? Most of the time. No, used to. It'll be earlier than that. Yeah, now. he's starting to get me up earlier. And um, then when I get up, I spend a little time on the uh, internet answering questions and checking emails and Etsy orders and things like that. And we usually go out seven. You, well, in the winter time we go out at seven, but now, but now that it's we're summertime, going six to we, six fifteen. As the summer goes on, we'll eventually be out at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, when it's really hot, we go out yeah. early. But so according to what time we get up, we go out, we spend thirty forty minutes with the animals. Yeah, and then we start in with the garden stuff, and we're probably I I spend all day out. Danny's usually not coming in till seven or eight o'clock at night, and he's in and out during the day. But he doesn't stay in maybe thirty minutes at a time, a couple yeah. of times during the day. And with the fencing, he's been out way more than ever. 
And I would say for us, it's 12 hour days. No less than 12 hour days. But now we do get to sit down. We do get to do some things off and on. And if we want to take a break, we sit down for an hour or two. Um, and this is kind of our peak period. I know one of the questions was, um, what's our busiest time? And I would say the spring, spring time. Spring and the fall. And then the fall. Yep, spring and fall are our two busiest times. During the winter and the summer, it's not near as busy because once it gets really, really hot, we're not out doing as much. We stay in. We'll have more time to do things inside. Uh, Danny will be able to work in the shop some. And so 12-hour days in the spring and fall pretty much. In the summer and winter, yeah. say seven or eight hours a day. And yeah, he's eating yeah. our English peas. I am eating English peas because they're like candy. Um, let's see. Angie's Pantry says, finally spring in Michigan. You hope? It was snowing. Where did you see it? Was it was snowing in Arizona this morning. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, then, um, so our business time, that answered that. Uh, yeah. What chores take the longest? Picking gardens and shelling and canning. Yeah. Probably. That would be Because we'll be shelling today for probably... Most of the day, and then I'll have to most can. Most of the day, and the thing, thing about English peas is if you don't get them done something with real fast, they the sugars in them will turn to starch. So as soon as we get enough of these, these have to immediately go into a refrigerator. And or, when I get enough, I'll can while he's still shelling. Yeah, I'll still be shelling once we get a canner full so she can go ahead and get them canned so we don't lose our sweetness. When we get these we've got here, I will take them in and put them up in the refrigerator with a cloth over them. That will keep them cold. And um, it'll take this pan full to do a canner. So when I get it full, I'll go in and can. And that's what I'm saying about rotating out. Danny and I do rotate chores. We did that with the carrots. There's no way I would have got four canners done yeah. yesterday by myself. Um, Danny helped with the carrots from picking to cleaning to I slicing. Cut them all up. Yeah. And that freed me up to go ahead and start the canner as soon as he got the first um, carrots cut. And I just kept rotating the canner out while he was cutting carrots. And it just worked out really well yesterday. So, but the cannon, the picking and cannon. The and picking and cannon. Is a, shelling. And shelling. Cleaning and whatever. Uh, takes the longest. Now, the shortest time. Probably feeding the animals. Feeding the animals. That's about the shortest time of anything we have. We've kind of got our animals down pat. And we, we can come out and within... 20 to 30 minutes be through with the animals and back in. Yeah. Um, I can't see the chat. I'm too far away. I know. We're, the chat's really hard for us to see. Um, they're talking. The question is, how much time do you spend with God? That's somebody. Oh. That's one of those things. This is this is how I look at it. Um, While Danny's on the tractor. I spend time with God all day. Yeah. If I'm picking in the garden, I'm talking to God. If I'm riding on a lawnmower, I'm talking to God. If I'm riding on a mm -hmm. tractor, I'm talking to God. You know, it's and his inspirations come in the quiet times when he's out on the tractor. That's his quiet time. And yeah. yes, he does spend time in the Bible. He's yes. things like that early morning. That's he, early, early morning. That's before stuff. he get before I ever get up, that's when he does his. Yeah, and. Um, so it's one of those all day things. Mine is when I'm in the afternoon, I guess. It's more my quiet time. Um, while he's out working on something else, that's my quiet time. I like one to three o'clock in the afternoon, I guess, better. All right. Uh, can we go on a vacation? That was another one of Brittany's questions. Okay, Brittany's question. Can we go on a vacation? The answer to that is probably no. Well, we could. Well, we'd have to line up somebody to take care of the animals if we did. And we have that where we can do that. We went last year to Tennessee. Uh, we were only gone four days. Four days. 
Yeah. Uh, four days would be about the extent of what we could do. Um, right now, if we go anywhere, it would probably be a day trip. And we would get up and feed the animals, leave and come back in late evening and feed again. It yeah. wouldn't be that we would be gone for days. Um, no, since we've gotten a lot more animals, the thing about being gone for days probably won't happen. Uh, we would have to choose the time. This time of the year, we could not go on vacation. No, not during. Uh, last year, we planned it. And well, we actually, were really iffy last year. And we we got well, I mean, up. Let's just be honest. Last year, we got up early in the morning. Yeah. We picked uh, green beans and, English, and peas. English peas, came in and canned all of we them. Shelled them and canned them. Shelled them and canned them and snapped them before we even left to go to the conference in Tennessee. Yes. That day. And when we got home. That evening when we got home from the conference, I dug potatoes. Yes. Yeah. So we were really pushing it this time I mean, last year, and we knew that. That's why we really can't leave this time of the year only no, on this, day trips. If we planned a vacation, I would say in the summer when it's hot, and it would be to go north. It would be to go north. I would never go cold. south. No. <laughs> or else in the, it's really hard in the fall. We really can't plan much in the fall because no, the of fall, the sugar cane. The fall because we have a sugar cane and we have the butchering of animals. We have all kinds of stuff that has the preserving of meat and curing meat and stuff like that. And if we went anywhere in the winter, most everybody is in snow in the winter, and we really hate snow. Yeah, I don't... I, the only thing I would do in the winter would be somebody that's a lot warmer than we are. Well, I wouldn't want to go where it's warmer. In the winter? No, but even in the winter, I just I don't, I, I just hate heat that much. <laughs> so vacations like slim to none. Slim to none. Day trips is going to be our only options yeah. for the most part. Um... Another of Brittany's questions is, is your main income from the homestead? Our main income, let me say, we tried a main income from the homestead. We tried growing vegetables and selling them. And you about starved to death. And you about starved to death. Because where we live at, now I'm not saying this is everywhere. This is just here. But where we live at here, people will drive right by you and go to Walmart and pay a higher price than rather than buy fresh vegetables from a farm. Mm -hmm. And then when they do buy fresh vegetables from the farm, they want to treat you like a grocery store. They want to be able to call at any time of the day or any time of the night. Or any time of the year. Or any time of the year and come pick up what they want. And that's just not possible. Yeah, they want to say, can I come get some English peas midsummer? Yeah. I don't have English peas midsummer. I only have them like this time of the year. Um, some people wanted to come get uh, blueberries all, do, all year long. Now, if we had them in the freezer, yes, but we did yeah. not have fresh blueberries. We don't have fresh ones all year long. In July. You only June have them July. in June and July. That's it. So, we're not a grocery store, and it was hard to make a living. Um, Angie says she loved our uh, carrot harvest yesterday. Yes, those carrots were beautiful. and But our income is predominantly from Etsy and YouTube. Yes. That's that's where our income is predominantly. Danny does his woodworks. We have some books on Etsy. Uh, Danny does the English. Hey, let me just say this right now. I forget. Danny did the English <laughs> pea manual, and it tells you how to grow these beautiful English peas. If you don't have one, go buy one on our Etsy store, deepsouthhomestead.etsy.com. Just trying to sell a few books. I well, have I mean, a hey. cookbook, and he has a sweet potato manual. If you don't know how to grow sweet potatoes, that's going to be one of our big things again this year. The thing about it is, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, guys, I mean, you know, we're sitting here shelling English peas. English peas. We've got, she's got a five-gallon bucket, i got a five-gallon bucket. Um, and we got a phone call, as usual, which usually we delete them and just get rid of them. Uh, but you know we we can grow English peas here, and we can and grow sweet, sweet potatoes. potatoes here. And if you would rather have a book from somebody that you've never seen grow anything, or would you rather have a book from somebody that you've seen actually produce food? And our books have pictures. Yes, our pictures. I did they not have go our on the pictures. internet and yeah. get pictures like most people do. 
I grew everything. All the pictures are pictures I took in both books. Um, so that's why it takes us a long time to do a book. We've got many, many books coming out, but it may take a year or two to get them done because I make sure I have all the pictures from the harvest, from the planting, any stages we need, we put our pictures in there. That's yeah. we one don't, of the biggest, biggest things. We don't go on the internet and hunt pictures. No. So what you see in our in our both our books, the English pea and the sweet potato, are things we grew. Not yeah. something from the internet. But that's that's predominantly where our income comes from. It's from Etsy and YouTube. Yes. We don't do uh we don't do Patreon. We don't do all this theming and stuff like that. We've stuck with YouTube and they yeah, they they was there for a month. They took over half of our money away from us. Um and a lot of people say, wow, I went over to Social Blade. Y'all make a lot of money. Guys, we have never made what Social Blade says we make. And so the deal is. I think Social Blade is there to to entice people to get into this business of making videos, really. Yeah. Because it's, it's not accurate. <laughs> but we make decent on what we do. We're not, you know, asking for money all the time. Yeah, I just asked you to buy a book. Just saying. Yeah, but, but you get something for your money. Yeah. And if you guys, this is the way I look at it. We do good to keep Deep South Homestead and Crazy Days going all year long. And then, and Crazy Days is my channel. Um, Danny does all God's children. Once every two or three months, he'll put up a video when God leads him. But it's hard enough to keep these channels going, much less steam it and all this. I am on Instagram. But I forget about Instagram, and I don't put pictures up very often. And when I think about it, I throw up pictures right quick. I'm on um, Facebook. We have a page called Deep South Homestead Gathering Place. Uh, if anybody wants to join it. I don't even think to go there and put pictures up half the time. I've been so busy. I try to think about it ever so often. But it's a great place. It's, called, it's a gathering place for, for people to come and meet and enjoy each other's company. Uh, it's not like most sites, I guess. Ours is more of a get-together than it is informational lots of times. It's just more yeah. people chat among themselves about different things. It doesn't necessarily have to be homesteading. it. They just get to know each other. Is there a corn manual in the works? Yes, that's one yes. of them we want to get done. Um, but if you guys want to support us, we have PayPal. The way I look at it, if yeah. you want to go over to Patreon and Steam it and support people, we have PayPal. You can go on there. You can send money. You can say, I want to put it toward gardening. I want to put it toward animals. I want to put it toward the RV, the cabin, cannon, whatever. You can do that. It's there. Uh, if you want to really help us, we have an Amazon link. Um, it's in most all the videos on, in the description. You can buy things through our Amazon link. That helps us. If you want a house tool, you can order it. Uh, I am a Living on a Dime uh, affiliate, so if you want a Living on a Dime cookbook, you can go into the description and click on that, and I get some money from her cookbook if you buy it through me. I'm also uh, an affiliate with Betty's Box of Blessings, and uh, what else? There's another one. House uh, tools, Betty's Box of Blessings. I don't know. You handle that end of it. <laughs> If you go through our description and click on those links, then we get some money from it. So that helps us. It's a small amount, but we do get some. Yes. And do we plant any food for the animals? The animals get, uh, the pigs get scraps. Almost everything. <laughs> they get, yeah, they get scraps left over from everything. The chickens get some of our scraps that's left over. The chickens and the turkeys get all the weeds we pull up out of the garden. Uh, and believe me, there's lots of weeds there's in lots Mississippi. There's lots of stuff in here, yeah. Um, the rabbits get a lot of the weeds we pull up out of the garden. Uh, if we trim trees, the rabbits get their, yeah. um, like these oak trees, the rabbits love oak limbs. So, yes, we have lots and lots of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that we that we get for our animals. Somebody's um, telling us we need to do Patreon. We don't have time to do Patreon. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like if people want to support us, they can support us through 
our other ways. Um, we probably could make more on Patreon, but I don't have time to keep up with another channel. Yeah. It's just not. We barely keep up with what we have going. Yeah, it's just not feasible for us. And plus, we have a lot of people that's on limited incomes that. Yeah, that can't afford to go over there. can't afford to go over there. Um, let's see. Let's see. You'll have to see them because I'm too far away. I don't away. see any more. Um, somebody said they're so jealous we're shelling peas right now. There's, they're in Utah. They're only about two inches high. Um, somebody says I'm on Facebook because of homesteading and canning groups as well as sewing groups. Yeah. Lots of times, some of these uh, things on Facebook, you get to know people. You can ask questions directly and things like that. People like the Facebook interaction. Of course, you don't make any money on Facebook. It's mainly no. just so another way to... It's strictly just information. Information-wise. And fellowship. And fellowship. Our whole thing is the fellowship... That's we, why we. That's why we're doing this live stream today. It's just, yeah. just spend time with y'all, you know. And so that's our whole goal. Even our gathering that we had in the um, spring in March, we've already set a date for the gathering next year. Yeah. I think it's the ninth. I forgot. I forgot if it's the seventh or the ninth. I think I it's remember. the ninth of March. So anybody that would like to come to Mississippi in March again next year. We're not sure exactly. It's mainly a big fellowship of people. It will be back at the Stone County Fairgrounds again. Yeah, it'll be at Stone County Fairgrounds. So if you want to make your plans. Um, I see somebody drive shaft Drew says hello. I've Danny, I, can I just plant pumpkin seed in the ground, the Cherokee tan? Yes. Yes. As long as the danger of frost is passed, yes. Yes, we did last year. Yeah. I've got some in containers I just was experimenting with. And yeah, all, we were, most of those come up. I think I had two that didn't come up. And Danny's got to transplant them before they get too big. Our problem is here, we've got so many things planted, we're running out of room to yeah. keep stuff from cross-pollinating. Angie's helping me out. She said she thinks it's the ninth and she'll be there. All right. All right. Yeah, I think it's the ninth. I, I'll have to go look at the calendar, but I've got it booked. It's a Saturday. Um, yeah, we did it on a Saturday this time. Yeah, I, I booked far enough ahead that I could get it on the Saturday. Um, do you, you all use any natural insect repellents? We have Beautyberry Galore. Yeah. If you need insect repellents in Mississippi, you can go get Beautyberry and uh, use it, but... We don't, we, uh, th they don't bother us that much. bad. Yeah. Now, picking these English peas, we have what we call no see -ums. They're tiny little bugs you never see. They attack your face and sometimes your arms and legs, but they're sporadic and they don't happen very often. They don't happen very often. I Just mean, like twice, three times while we were out this morning. Yeah. You're going to eat all the profit up. I can't help it. They're so good. I got to have something to and eat. Somebody hadn't fixed him lunch. Yeah. Will lemongrass grow in Ohio? You can always put it in a container and bring it inside if you think it's too cold. Yeah, I would in the wintertime because even some of mine died this year and I had to replant. And as dry as it's been and I hadn't been watering. I watered yours this morning. Did so, you? Yep. Hopefully mine will continue to grow. And I'm having to start from scratch too, guys, because I dug every bit of my lemongrass up. Yep. That song, that bird sounds beautiful. <laughs> I don't know if you're talking about the turkey or the, oh, the songbird in the background. I don't know what kind is that. Uh, I he's just up here in this tree somewhere. You hadn't heard him. Well, I hear him, but I didn't. We've got so many different birds here; it's hard to tell which one. Danny it is. usually knows what kind. Uh, some, somebody, Vivian, says her hot peppers cross-pollinated with their tomatoes last year. Holy mackerel. I bet that was weird. That was a strange one, I'm sure. Will bush beans and pole beans cross-pollinate? It depends on the uh, botanical name. Look and see if they're the Check same. Check their botanical name. If their botanical name or genus name is the same, yes, they will cross-pollinate. And will peas 
cross pollinate if you plant different varieties close together. Yes. yes. You would if you try to save seeds. If you try to save seeds, you'll end up with a hybrid. Like if you have pink eyed purple <laughs> hole and Crowder's planted side by side, you'll have a combination of the two when you plant your seeds. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. Can you put lemongrass in containers? Yes. Yes. It grows well in containers, but you need a pretty good size container. I'd say, what, a three-gallon or so? Three or bigger. Yeah, pretty good size container. It'll look a little funny to start with, but believe me, you'll wish you'd put it in it because it yep. gets pretty good it size. It gets big. Um, songbirds, that's what they were talking about. Yeah, they were. they're all around us here. We're experiencing something here, guys, that we've never had happen before at Deep South. Our apple trees have bloomed twice. And our lemon tree. Yes. We have lemons the size of, what, 50 cent pieces or quarters? Yeah, pretty much. And it's blooming again. I have a crab apple tree here in the backyard. It's got crab apples all over it. And it's done flowering out again. My apple trees have apples on them. It has flowered again, and I have new apples coming on top of the older apples that's on there. Thank you, Mama Cat. She says she loves to hear you just sitting talking about whatever's on your heart. Porch time, I guess. Oh, yeah, probably so. Um, so. Yeah, we have some anomalies happening here. Yeah, some really weird stuff. But now everything's producing really well compared oh, to everything now. this year has produced in abundance. And the and our regular apple tree, our Anna apple, has oh my goodness, I don't know how many apples. It is so loaded, yeah. Danny's gonna have to. I'm gonna have to prop, prop the limbs up. I'm yeah. sure. Angie wants to know: Can you just plant the Cherokee tan pumpkin seeds in the ground, uh, or do I start them in the house first? You can Angie, put them in the ground. You can put them in the ground. But now, if, if it's still frosting at your place, you would want to start them inside. But I would get them in the ground when they get, what, three or four inches tall? Yeah, if you're going, yeah. If you start them inside. Because she's really up north. Uh, how well do purple hull peas grow in your area? Very, Fantastic. Very well. That's probably the easiest pea yeah. to grow here. Yeah, they... They're fantastic. The apple trees love this cool snout. Yes. Uh, the Grand Solar Minimum has really been a blessing for us here in the South. Our, yes. All of our cool weather stuff has just excelled. But now, like this week, now we've been in the high 80s this week. And next week, they're predicting we'll go back into the mid to high 80s again. And what happens is that actually knocks all of our cool weather stuff back down real hard. Yeah, these English peas will die. Yeah, the English peas probably won't make it another couple of weeks. Yeah, if they last that long. If they make it that long. Plus, we're in a drought right now, so that's not yeah, not helping. The reason we say that is when it doesn't rain for over a week, week and a half here, uh, our ground is sandy. And yeah. all the moisture goes away fast. So it we just about need rain every week if we can get it. At yeah, least we have to have rain uh, every week. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's saying their pear tree um, got hit with a freak cold. And another one said it's the Lord's blessings for preparation. That's what we're looking at. It. Um, he's just putting the food here. So we're going to can it. Well, we're looking at it kind of like the story in the Bible about Joseph, who had seven years of plenty. And, you know, we, we've had plenty, so we're, we're putting it up. Yeah. Uh, somebody said in Winnipeg, Manitoba, that's in Canada, that's Canada, trees just started to bud. Wow. Wow. We already have apples the size of what? Tennis balls? I saw one that was pretty good size, yeah. Yeah. And then we have blooms on the tree. So we're going to have, yeah. if all these apples make, it's going to be fantastic harvest. We have a good harvest this year. We have some peaches. Now, we didn't have as many peaches as we'd like because of the cold weather killed a lot of the bloom. Uh, we can't plant these peas. If somebody's asking, can we plant more of these if it cools down again? No. no. It'll be too hot. It'll be too hot. Uh, usually by this time of the year, by the middle of May, our English peas are gone. 
you plant early and you harvest what you can because these already, I don't know if you guys can tell, but or where's that at? Come down. This one. Oh, you're right. Okay. This one already has spots on it. All the leaves from about this far up is already turning yellow and looking funky. They're getting the mildew on them. And yeah. the tops are loaded with peas still. We only picked what was ready. Um, if we could keep it cool for a couple of weeks, we would make just oh, blue coodles of peas with yeah. a little rain and cool weather, but it's fixing to turn hot. So what's on the vine, if he waters them, that's going to be it. Yeah, English peas is one of them things that's all about timing here. Because if you don't get them in at exactly the right time, then you won't get a harvest. If we'd have waited one more week later to have planted, we probably would have lost most of these English peas because it's dry and hot already. Uh, somebody wants to know, when do you think is the best time to plant red potatoes in northeast Florida? Northeast Florida? Probably the end of January. What variety of English peas are we showing? Little Marvel. That's the only one I'll plant. Now, we're going to try the Wandos at some point, but we didn't this year. We've saved some peas from the gathering. Yeah. And um, We'll experiment with the Wandos, but these have already been acclimated to our mm -hmm. area. We've planted these peas now. I've had these seeds probably 10 years or better. Yeah. So they're very acclimated to our climate. And do extremely and well. I don't know if y'all can see, but he has gobs and gobs of seed here. Uh, do we like the little, do we like morel mushrooms? No. We don't eat any mushrooms. No, I don't like mushrooms, period. We don't like the taste of mushrooms. And I don't know that we have any around here. Do no, we? we don't have morels here. I don't here. think we have those no. anyway. Um, Too hot and dry for them. Yeah. I wouldn't trust most of the mushrooms. I mean, this is such a humid climate. Yeah, we have mushrooms galore, but and some of them look pretty funky. I have pictures of some that look really, really weird back in the fall. Yeah. And I was going to post pictures, but because of their weirdness and what people would have thought when I posted them, I decided not to because they were very weird. It would have given off the wrong implements yeah. it, I mean, indications if people didn't know what it was yeah. and i decided not to post them no, but we'd yeah. rather not mushrooms can get really weird here um who wants to be my 2000 sub free forging freedom podcast channel wow somebody go sub right quick make them 2000 um I'm crazy days is fixing to hit 3,000. I like less than 200 people hitting 3,000, y'all. I never thought crazy days would even have that many. And deep south is fixing, it's less than 200. We will hit 35,000. And y'all, that's just amazing. You guys are yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank y'all. Y'all are so awesome. I have to think about something as a an appreciation, but I got to think because I hadn't had time to think about it. How long do you have to cook fresh peas? I have only ever had canned peas. That's 70. Hey, Sherry. Um, these fresh ones, what, uh, 20 minutes? Maybe 20 minutes, yeah. 20, less than 30 anyway. Um, I'll put them on and put some uh, butter and a little salt in them. And um, some people would put a little bit of uh, ham or a little bacon or bacon grease or whatever they want in it but we just like the taste of the peas now you can eat them fresh in a salad just like they yeah. are and you see danny sitting here eating them fresh yeah that's that's the whole thing i'm, I'm uh, constantly i don't even know if we have a moderator in here today yeah marshall farms was in a while ago okay i was oh, yeah somebody got it i guess and it okayed it all right um Let's see. Sherry, if you ever eat these fresh, you won't want those canned ones ever No, you'll again. never eat another canned one if you eat one of these fresh ones. Now, I, I have to say this. There's different types of English peas. Now, when you go to choose an English pea to plant, you want to buy a variety that the seeds are all wrinkled up and shriveled up to almost nothing because that means it has an extremely high sugar content. Yes. If that English pea is round and smooth when you go to plant it as a and seed. And looks like this. And looks like that. Don't 
You don't want it because it's not going to be sweet. You want the shriveled up ones, the ones that look really shriveled, like they're not good. That's the kind you do want. Oh, yeah. Jen at the Nut House is here, too. She's working and listening. Good. It's hard. I've got a glare on the screen, so if I... Yeah, I do. I can't even see the Danny screen. Danny can't see it, and I'm barely seeing pieces of it when things get to uh, um, roll in a certain direction. Uh, what would be the best beginner-friendly plants to grow in a pot in an apartment? I would say some type of pepper. Pepper or tomatoes. And tomatoes. Um, different herbs. If you like herbs. If you go plant a tomato, make sure it's a determinate variety and not an indeterminate. Yes. Because you would want a bushier tomato instead of yeah. one that goes all you over your apartment. <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. Uh, if, you, that. <laughs> if you like herbs, I would say uh, get a few of the herbs that you like and plant those in small pots and use those occasionally. Uh, you would really love that. Patty said she was the 34,000 subscriber here. Wow. That's pretty awesome. See, I never go over to check who uh, the, who's actually subbed and all. I used to, but I don't have time now. We don't now. have time anymore. And I just happened to look while ago, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. We're like less than 200 away from 35,000. Hey, Mark. Mark popped in. Mark Kruger. Kreger. I may be saying Kreger. I don't need to call him Kruger. That might be the wrong thing. Okay, get to the farm. I'm at 482. Credit to Deep South for inspiration to get to the farm online anyway. Finally walking two years laid up with a bad leg. and Yes, get to the farm. I did a video collab with them. I think, it, was it on Crazy Days? Maybe. I don't uh, remember. The food. What kind? Something to do with foods. Y'all had to go to Crazy Days and check it out. And then check out and get to the farm. Um, how do you trim your, how do you trim your peas? You're talking about these type peas? We don't trim, I'm not sure on that what you're meaning. Living off-grid McGarvey style. Oh, that's one of the left friends of Lori's. Yeah, how do we trim peas? I'm not sure you have to we don't trim. elaborate a little yeah, more on that one. I don't know, I don't know what the term trim peas means. Yeah. Because um, we just leave ours and let them grow wherever they grow. Yeah, Jen at the Nut House has been with us almost since the beginning. I, I think I, she was probably one of the first, if not the first. I don't know if she was the first, but if not, she was one of the first two or three people that I ever talked to on the phone. And it was just so funny to talk to her in California. And we were just starting out our YouTube channel. It was really, really yeah. funny. We have, and we've been friends ever since, and she is a blast, and she spent time here with us at the gathering, and she and her husband are coming back and spending some time, hopefully, before too much longer, because we didn't get to meet Mike the first time. We didn't time. get to meet Mike, so. Uh, do, do you something shucking the pea pods? I'm not sure what that is. Time to so said the tragedy on the homestead was the first video when they found us. Yes, that was our corn blew yeah, down. Yeah, the, the corn blew down. That we had a two years ago. Yeah, we had a freak uh, downburst. And it blew the corn down. And we tried. We had videos after that where we tried different ways. People told us three different ways. I think one yeah. was we just let nature do its thing. The other was we tried to um, tie it up like Florida weave style. Yep. And the third one was we stood it back up and put dirt, put dirt around, around it. And out of all three, let nature take its course, that corn stood back up and produced better than it ever had before. Yeah. The ones that we did the those Florida weave and the one we did the dirt barely produced. Yep. So sometimes it's better to just let nature take its course and be done with it. Yep. <laughs> Jen's our number one stalker. <laughs> uh, uh, that is the video that I got hooked on 
Angie's Pantry said when the corn blew down. Boy, that must have been a a big thing then. I we didn't even realize that it. No. You know we. I don't. I don't know. I didn't realize a lot of people had really paid that much attention to that one and came from that video. Uh, a view is a view. Yes. Look. Min Pam. Pam. Look at this. Don't you want some deep South English peas? Now she does mukbang, and so Pam, we're doing uh, mukbang here. We eat and talk about what we're eating. Yeah. Kind of because of Min Pam, we do that. And. Yo, I call her that because a view is a view. She did go by M I M P A M, Mim Pam. Yeah. I've got to get more English peas. Y'all carry on. Yeah, so she's got to fill her bowl up with English peas there. And then I got to go can, so y'all going to. Yeah. So we'll have to, when it comes that time, we're going to have to get off of here because it is dinner time already. It's 12 o'clock, fixing to be. Yep. It's about to get time for us to have to have a bite to eat. Actually, I ate while ago because I knew I was going to be. We was hoping to have enough shelled that when we got ready to stop to eat, we could also. I'll start canning. Canning. Yeah. And I'm laying out all the um, the ones that are turned first. That's what I'm doing here. So, guys, if we decide to. Sit on the porch and talk occasionally. Yeah. Number one, while we're eating and talk about the foods, thanks to Mim Pound, we're doing the um, mukbang deep south way eating. Yep. <laughs> um, we don't eat fancy. We just eat country style food. Yeah, but that's the best. And um, sometimes when we're shelling and uh, working on things, we may go live just to show you. I don't know if somebody was asking uh, about how we shut these. I don't know. Is That that might have been something they were saying. How we show them. How big is the pan? This is my pan. It's a stainless steel. Danny's is a plastic one, the same size. It's a, how many quarters is that? Does it say? No. I don't know. It would ho hold uh, nine pints, I know. Maybe six uh, quarters. Probably. Uh, I think it's a six see. quart bowl. What's for dinner? Uh, Danny's going to have a mutton burger and some cheese and probably lettuce and stuff like that. Uh, I've got a pork chop left. We we uh, have a video coming out on deep, no, it'll be on crazy days. We got to eat out last night, so I'm going to have a leftover pork chop. And whatever else we can find to go with it. Whatever else we can find to go with it, yep. Really quick, eat and go. Um, let's see. Uh, Angie says she loves our chat. Um, love the eating, working, and talking real life. Yes. Well, yep. it gives us something to do instead of just talk to each other. Um, the healthiest way to eat, it is the healthiest way. Yep. We have lots and lots of food here to work with. That's yeah. For sure. Pam says she's driving down this year, I promise. I want to ride that tractor and help with the garden and chores. Well, if you come on, we are going to be eating fresh. I know she likes her fresh foods. You can't get any fresher than going and digging a potato and cooking it right afterward. But now you gotta hurry because we're gonna be digging potatoes over uh, the next week, and we're going to be through. Over the next week, we should be digging close to 400 more pounds of potatoes. And then Planting. later, we'll have peas, beans. Uh, our container uh, butter peas is looking awesome. Plus, we're fixing to put out 250 more sweet potato draws. Uh, somebody Udo Pops wants to know what's a mutton burger. It is a hamburger made from sheep or mutton. Made from a hair sheep. Yes. Not a wool sheep, but a hair sheep. You hear chickens. You also hear a turkey. We have chickens and turkeys. That I don't know what. Can they see that building? That uh, building? You see the edge of it. Uh, is where our chickens and turkeys are. And the turkey can be very ugly. Think you have a troll. Do we have a troll? We might. I don't see a troll. If we do, Jen will get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> a view is a view said so fainted. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Um well, a view is a view. You are welcome. You let me know. Uh we don't have the house phone anymore. We you'll have to message me at beepsouthhomestead at gmail.com so I can talk to you. Uh she says she could eat 399 taters all by herself. I bet you could. No, you're not big enough to do that. No. Um, what is the process? Do we process our own sheep? No, we had him taken to the meat processor. Um, we didn't have time. At that point, we were busy getting things done around here, and we decided it was quicker and easier. And she let us barter. Plus, we was able to barter with the butcher shop. Yeah, she let us barter. She wanted some seeds, and uh, so we bartered seeds for the process. So it came, it worked for both of us. Yeah. Jan Jones says, "I'm not a troll. I just, I'm just listening while I'm working." Ah, <laughs> uh, we're good. We like trolls. I have, a, actually, have a troll. Miss Sherry Somebody, gave you one, didn't you? Yeah, family? I have a troll in there. I ought to get her out and bring her and show you our little troll. Um, let's see. Somebody want to know about the sheep. Uh, the hair sheep are, are not like wool sheep. Wool sheep have to be sheared every year. The hair yeah. sheep will... Um, they shed. They shed like any other animal. Wool sheep has lanolin all inside the meat and makes it strong tasting. Hair sheep does not have that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see. Do you have to add salt when canning? Not on my diet. When you add salt to canning, it's just as a preservative. It's a preservative. Um, it's still going to make your food a little salty in the jars, but. You have to have a half a teaspoon per pint or a teaspoon yeah, per quart. Yeah, it's, it's a preservative, so you can't not put salt in your canning jars. Right. It's not for necessarily flavoring. It's for the preservative part of it. Um, not many people want to barter, though. Here we're lucky. We've got a lot of people in this yeah. area that will barter for a lot of things. So Danny is... He barters for a lot. I barter for of everything. Uh, bartering a haircut. Now I've done that too. Uh, the lady that cuts our hair. Yep. I barter blueberries and uh, okra and peas. I don't remember. She'll let me barter anything because she yep. she loves her veggies. She's in town and can't grow a garden, so she'll barter with us. She'll some. barter for veggies. Yep. Uh. Angie says it's 65 there and raining. Uh, bartering. Okay, let's see. I'm, it's sunny and 84 here. <laughs> somebody tried kombucha scoby for a grapevine cut. Traded kombucha scoby for a grapevine cutting. Yeah. Uh, a view is a view is eating lima beans that were cooked in a crock pot with some leftover chicken and veggies. Now see, that's what I'm talking about. That's some good eating. What is a favorite meat in our area? Probably beef. Beef. Ninety-nine percent of the people eat beef here. More yeah. and chicken. Beef and chicken. Um, let's see. Using salt and canning is definitely a preservative, but its molecular structure changes compared to raw salt that won't hurt you in your heart. Yeah, Kelly, thank you. I was thinking that was something that you could do is because when it's canned, it's a little bit different. So, um, ever who asked that question, Kelly's answering it for you there. Uh, somebody said they barter too a massage for car repairs. And somebody's saying Doug and Stacy's doing a stainless steel bowl giveaway or something on their channel. These were only what? Ten bucks? Ten dollars, yeah. No, it wasn't these. No, it wasn't these. It's dish pans. Stainless the steel stainless dish pans. Stainless steel dish pans yeah. were only ten dollars at our local uh, store. Oh, yeah. And uh, 
we bought what three of them here a while back and we're going to go get more um the dish pan is just a little bit bigger than this not much but it's deeper and all and we really like how using the stainless steel for the most part yeah um uh seven d says she's looking to barter some cows for hair she seven d do you still have the um you still have the miniature cow or the miniature uh jersey jerseys because female. We, we're looking for a female and we've got a guy that he's looking for some so if we don't have a trailer to get that far but he does so we're we're learn we're trying to figure out if um we could get somebody to you. I've been so busy I hadn't had time, but you can send me an email or something, Sherry, and let me know. Uh, somebody said they sent an email to an old address yesterday and it came back to you. Uh, Tammy, I am. It's um, deepsouthhomestead at gmail.com. It would be easier to get us that way. Oh, she said yes, she still does. Okay, well, send me an email about them and let let us send Colton. And how message. much? So, because the guy we we're talking to is interested in purchasing some too. So yeah, he wants some females, and he's got the trailer and willing to travel. So, if you have some females, let us know in an email, and we will get the message to Colt and see what we can do about it. Because Mr. Dexter really wants a friend. He's all alone sitting out here in the field. He's he's bellering at somebody else's mama. She said they do have the Dexters. Uh, a view is a view says she's so glad Danny's much better. We're the cutest couple on YouTube. Well, thank you, Pam. I think we're right cute, don't you? I ain't calling me cute. <laughs> no. We have fun. That's what counts. That's it. All right. Jen's putting up the email for those that wanted it. Uh, Mama Tribe says we went from 25 to 34 fast. Yeah, because it was like we just did a 25,000 giveaway. Seems like not long ago. Um, oh, also, while I'm thinking about it. Um, thank you, Sherry. Um our homestead world we did a collaboration and we did this and put it up just before the gathering so it kind of got lost in all the gathering videos um liz zorab in the uk and i started the um our homestead world and we wanted everybody that is on a homestead to do a video and put it up so we could add it to a playlist so people could go there and if there's somebody in their area they can find it and if you'll go to Our Homestead World, um, I think it says slash United States slash uh, or Mississippi. It's in our playlist. I have a playlist. If you'll do a video and let me know, I'll add it to our playlist because we want everybody to have a chance at these. The questions are in our video and they're in Liz Zorap's video. And if you'll mention us and send me the link, We'll add it to our videos. I don't know if I can make them see the size of some of these peas, but y'all see this English pea? That's how big these English peas are. They're, I know I probably can't do it, but there is these peas are as big as my thumbnail, some of them. Yeah, I just shelled some too. I mean, it's They're amazing. Huge. They're huge. Uh, do you get time to go fishing? Nope. He's only been fishing twice since we've gotten married, and that's something that when... All this cannon stuff, we're going to start finding a fishing hole somewhere. Either he that, or if we could come up with $6,000, we'd build our own pond here, because that's what the guy said he'd have to have to build my pond. Yeah, y'all want to send us $6,000? Put it toward the pond. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, the deal is... We would is, gladly get rid of the pigs and put a pond in there. Yeah, the deal is, there's not many places left that doesn't have <laughs> contaminated waters. Right. And Danny's really funny about eating fish from just anywhere. Yep. And I think the uh, D said she, we could go over into Louisiana. They have a place that's clear. That's the only place I've heard of that's really saying anything about pretty clear water and not contaminated with something. Most all water and creeks around anywhere is already contaminated. From something 
further up yeah. north from them. Mama's tried, so she's jealous of her peas aren't doing that well. Guys, all the shelling I've done, I've only <laughs> took this much out of a five-gallon bucket here. And I, I mean, it's just, I'm going to be here for hours. Yeah, mine is down to, uh, I'm almost down to a half, so I'm fixing to have to go fix lunch. A views of you said, hashtag Team Fish Pond. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to give me six, six grand, I'll do a video on letting you watch it get built. <laughs> and then I'll do a video on letting you watch me fish in it. And then you can come fish in it if you and want to. We'll even to. do a video on cooking the fish. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll sit down and have this chat again with us eating the fish. That's funny. Yeah, Pam said, yeah, you have to be careful. You really do because there's so much. Yeah, you, I mean. We're in the deep south. Yeah. So any of our waterways come from up north. And if there's anything chemical related up north on the waterways, yeah, it all comes south. I mean, I just, I Christy don't... Bett says her peas are all just vines. Too much nitrogen. Um, you can also grow your own freshwater shrimp in a tank. You now, can, but you got to keep the water at 80 degrees, and it's just a, and it's got to be moving water. I mean, there's a lot of things. I've already looked into that. Yeah. A rabbit keeps eating Mama Tried's peas. Yeah, that's. I, I would be eating a rabbit. Yeah, we had that happen last year. Last year. We've got a little small fence around ours, and it's helped. It helped when we put it up last year, so we did it again this year. And we didn't find that anything's eat on it since we put the little fence Well, up. plus we eradicated the rabbit. Oh, yeah. He did get rid of the rabbit. That was right. Yeah. The there one was, we There were several of. rabbits. We got rid of all of them. 7D says now she wants to fish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love know, the fish. But fishing is contagious. Yeah, fishing is very contagious. Now, I'm not a fisherman. That's one thing. But I like to go sit and watch the water. So I'll sit and watch water while somebody else fishes. But I'm afraid if I ever get started fishing, I'd be hooked. So that's something that I do want us to do is try when the veggies kind of slow down a bit is to find somewhere. Even if we don't eat the fish, we at least go fishing and just have the thrill of fishing. How many pints do you think you'll get from a 50-foot row of peas in a good year versus a bad year? Oh, we usually plant five. 60 foot rows and we get 60 to 65 pints from it yeah so i'm gonna say 10 pints per 50 foot row probably pretty close about 10 pints per 50 foot row and right now how many english peas have i already put up do you know i don't know um it's a bunch i'm probably at least up to 20 if not 25 pints of English peas and these today I will probably put up another 25 no probably 15 to 20 I don't know um, it's according to how they turn out according I know at least 12 or more today I'd say at least 12 it'd be great if I can do two canners and I probably can that would be 18 oh, that'll easy be two canners two canners would be 18 pints yeah that'll, that'll be easy Jen said, did somebody say, let's go fishing? Yeah, Jen, come on. Let's find us a place to go fishing. She likes fishing. Anywhere. What keeps a neighbor's cat out of a garden? A gun. A live trap. <laughs> a live trap. Dispose of. Did I say that? Yeah. Uh, if I had the money, I would definitely donate towards a fish pond. <laughs> that Shea smiles. Y'all deserve some R&R. &R. I think if we ever had a fish pond, we probably would sit back there because uh, we want a gazebo out by it. I'd put a pier out in it and just sit out there and fish. And fish all the time. I'd probably never get nothing done. Yeah, uh, Linda says she remembers her aunt's uncle sitting in the living room shelling peas. Uh, Brenda says she loves fishing, but Paul doesn't. Well, Paul can sit and watch water, too. Fiddle heading season coming up any day now. What is fiddle heading? That's a little ferns, fiddleheads. The what? They're like a fern. They grow in they grow in wet places. Oh, never heard of that. Yeah, you harvest the little crooked part out of the middle. 
Have we ever made spicy or curry peas? Uh, uh, not English peas now. My field peas, my pink eye purple holes and stuff, I add jalapenos to them, and I love it. Makes great peas. Um, uh, Mama tried to something about turnips. Yes, I just put a turnip video up. Somebody was asking about the turnip roots, and it's on Crazy Days. If you can't find something on Deep South, go to Crazy Days. Yeah, because um, we do lots of things over on Crazy Days that we don't have room enough or time enough to do here on Deep South. Plus, it's just some of my crazy videos that I like. Yo, know, I am just so not paying any attention. I just threw holes where I'm supposed to be putting. Yeah, I saw the that. Dried peas. That's crazy. The, my mama tries to her goats love turnips. Hmm. Ours turned their nose up at ours. They didn't want to bother with them. Yeah, somebody's saying fiddleheads or baby ferns of some sort. Uh, that's another one of them survival foods. New Day said that's only $5.66 for each of the 35,000 subs. Yeah, if everybody would send us 5 or $6 a piece, that would be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? Yep. The price of two Coca-Colas. Hey, PNC. They just said hi. Um, a good cup of coffee. Instead of going and buying... Instead of going to Starbucks. Starbucks? Yep. Yeah, i got to have a coffee video up soon on crazy days. I'm going to be doing one toward the end of this month. It'll we got be a the lot of videos we've got to put up. Yeah, this one's going to be in collaboration with uh, the Frugal Family Food. Um, I've got a coffee video I'm working on. I've just got to get it put together. And it'll be a part of the Frugal Family Food thing. It'll probably be the 1st of June before I get it up, but I gotta have time to quit canning. Um, okay, so any more questions? Because we gotta get off. I gotta go yeah. fix lunch. I'm we gotta almost, eat lunch. We're after 12 o'clock here. I'm almost to get my bowl full. Y'all can see this. It's getting really close, and if I add Danny's, it's definitely gonna be full, so I have a canner. And we've enjoyed spending a little time with you guys, but yep, we gotta get busy. Hey, Becky. Some people just popping in. Yep, we have got to get something to eat and get going with the canning. We just figured while we were sitting here shelling for a while that we would just spend some time with our favorite people on YouTube. Yes. Uh, if you had a fish pond, you'd have company 24-7. Well, that'd be okay. We yeah. do sometimes anyway. We got people here anyway without it. <laughs> we need more than one canner going with all the canning we do. We have a glass top, and I'm really, really leery of doing but one canner at a time. Yeah. Um, it's all I can do to get one canner going while I'm working on something else, and I'm constantly rotating. So it's easier for me just to do one. Um what do you think about the lettuce recall? Uh, I've never bought lettuce in town and we don't it's buy been several years, two or three years. Uh, I very seldom ever buy anything but organic romaine lettuce. But if you ever understood the way lettuce is harvested and where it comes from, you would know why. Yeah. And we grow our own and so far our lettuce has been um, hanging in there. It's, the romaine is going to seed and yeah. Danny's going to save seed from it and the leaf lettuce is is the heat's getting it but I once or twice more we'll be able to eat out of the leaf lettuce yeah and I'm going to harvest some and Angie's pantry gave me a um Tupperware uh I guess you say lettuce and different veggies fresh food and fresh yeah veggies, eh? I've been putting my lettuce asparagus some tomatoes some onions all that stuff's been going in it and it works pretty well so i'll be probably harvesting a little bit more of the lettuce and putting in, in that tupperware i don't know what you call it fresh vegetable saver or something um we have a glass top stove which canner do we use uh we use the presto, presto. it's a small canner nine quart or seven quarts seven quart or nine pints 
it works really well on a glass top. You still have to be careful. Still got to be careful. You can't just bang it around on there. And you don't want to just slide, slide it. You got to be really careful with it. I usually put it on the stove and then put my jars in it to keep from sliding it so much. Um, okay, guys, we're fixing to get out of here. Thank you guys for joining us. And if I can find my button. All right, guys, we we'll, love y'all. And thank y'all for dropping in here on our little chat with you. Thank you, guys. Bye.